Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's some of you in peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart of Sign of Black in again, asking you to uh, go ahead and hit that share button for me. Um, thank you if you've hit like or subscribe. Um, I do appreciate that, but it's pretty much been um, the share button that's benefited us. Like and subscribe benefit me. Sharing benefits us. Uh, the message is more important than the messenger. And this message is a reply to Red Supreme, as you saw in the title. His video is entitled, uh, Black Women Love the Thug with Game and Hate the Educated Lame. But what he was actually getting at was not quite that simple. Um, Red Supreme, my response is not out of hatred, it's just a correction, if you will. You miss something, and frankly, we all miss something from time to time. Um... As an elder, I don't automatically know things that you don't know, but I'm supposed to. And when I do, I'm supposed to speak on whatever becomes relevant. So as an elder, I'm going to disclose what I observed over a longer stretch of time because the only reason I would know what I know if you don't know it is because I've had more time to see it. Now, your basic premise is that both educated men and thugs can get women and teach unsuccessful men something about women. That's a valid point. Uh, you mean to be balanced and fair, so I commend that. Your basic premise is also that just as men get passed up while they're young for rougher men, ambitious women get passed up for the ratchet thoughts when they're young. And you may know women that dealt with that. You said it. So you should have um, said what you said because you witnessed it. Um, I'm assuming that you're in your late 20s or early 30s. And so uh, what I'm reporting on is an extra decade. And that's the only reason I'm reporting on it. But what I have to say about it is that your equivalency is not a true equivalency, um, not even throughout the United States, let alone throughout the West. It's not even a true one to begin with. But I'm not expecting you to understand that just yet. I have to explain it and make my case. And that's fair. You saw the exceptions to the stereotypes very well. You saw through the stereotypes and you saw to the exceptions. But if there are exceptions, then that means that the stereotype must be the rule. You see enough exceptions to where the stereotype's not even a rule anymore. That's not bad. You rightly pointed out that lames are in all educational categories and even all criminal categories. Good call. You rightly pointed out that foreign women are not immune to running game. Good call. They're not. But by the same token, game is a difficult thing to learn in one's own first language. So if English is a first language to a woman abroad, then she can run game more easily and recognize game. True. But if her first language is Spanish and English is her second language or if her first language is Thai or Tagalog, then it's harder for her to both recognize and run game in English. That doesn't mean she won't try, but it's harder. The fact that women demand game while teaching men to not play games is itself a contradiction prevalent in the West while absent from non-Western nations. So you were saying that in the West, uh, they got to spit game. Or they got to come, they got to, they got a trick. That's almost true. Then you said they go abroad and they just tricking and then they come back and act like they did some real player stuff. In actuality, in the West, you got a trick and spit game. The question is how much of each one you got to do. And it's too much. You go abroad, you can do one or the other. And frankly, if you, if you go abroad, um, I'll come back to this, but I will say that, uh, if you go abroad, you still get a better deal. But I'm going to come back to this. Now, you rightly pointed out that things boil down to physical attraction. But you did forget this. It's also about not being socially embarrassing to a woman. And on the West Coast, you, Red Supreme, are not a source of embarrassment for a woman at your side. Light skin's not completely out of style over there. I thought it was, but I guess not. In the Southeast, women would like you sometimes, and other times they wouldn't. That's probably the same as on the West. But in the Southeast, you would have a hard time many times due to nothing more than your complexion, even if she likes you. And other days they look at your dreads and say, OK, well, that makes up for it. It's that crazy because, see, even though it's unreasonable to believe that every black woman in the Southeast hates your, your complexion. Um, the thing is that you have to remember they're also judging you by their friend's standards and not by just her own personal standards. And that's why in the Southeast, through no fault of yours, you would pull the overweight single moms with few options in men or just women that are some, for some reason unattractive to most of the men. 
because they would not be embarrassed to be seen on public with you. Not because you're wrong and you ain't got no game and it's, that's not why. If she's decent, bro, just decent, she will be embarrassed to be seen in public with you because she can hear her friends and her mind's ear saying to her, you can do better than that. Unless, of course, you go viral on a video whooping somebody's ass. Because they're judging you this harshly, even if she likes you herself. This is what we black men in the West have to deal with when trying to spit game to Western black women. You can come with game, which implies deception anyway. But you can have this well thought out game you spitting to her and the whole time she's judging you by what her friends would say. And how she would look to her friends in front of you or even how she would look to strangers uh, being seen out in public with you. That's how she's judging you while you spitting game. So here's the deal, man. Number one, when we pass up ambitious women at a young age and they pass up non-thugs, it's still a false equivalency because they w the ambitious woman still has options in men if she's visually attractive. If she's nice to look at and there are plenty of, and usually a woman has some guy that's going to look at and be like, yeah, she's cute. So that false equivalency uh, shows up when the fact is that the ambitious woman may still be visually attractive. She has options in men. The non-thug, even if he's cute to women, doesn't necessarily have these options. Number two, remember that it is the women that are dishonest about the importance of education and what they want in a man. Sex appeal, they're not telling you what that is and they're not t explaining to you um, how important that's going to be when you get older. When you're young, it's like you understand game, right? Okay, did you learn that from women telling you when you were young? You did not. Most of us don't because women don't tell us this when you were young, even the women in our families. Women learn from the men in their families and from the women how to be attractive. So the dishonesty on the part of the women negates any equivalency you might have been drawing. Number three, foreign women do offer a better deal. If a man is tricking or trying to be a boyfriend or trying to marry, whatever the case is, what he's looking for, he can find a better deal in a foreign woman. It's not just because he may have the passport. You see, it's not always the case. For me, I found that, that, wasn't, I found that, that was not always the case because not every woman knew my nationality. Number four, California is different from the rest of black America to a certain extent. I understand that many educated black men in Cali do chase lighter skin and non-black women. You would know the reasons for it better than me, but I know it exists because it's been guys from your neck of the woods that have told me about this. Black men have told me that they chase after lighter skin or non-black women. Um, but in the South and the Northeast, black men mostly prefer black women. In any case, number five, black women have more options in men than we have in, in women, which I said back at number one. No matter what we do, except for one. You see, the gym-oriented black man is the man on whom the women don't cheat, but with whom they cheat on someone else. But the women don't say at a young age, look, what we really care about is the muscle and the sex appeal or, or the, the muscle is the sex appeal. They don't tell you this when you're young. They don't tell you this when they're old. So what they're doing is they're trying to trick a bunch of men to be in providers, which is why men are thinking that they're going to be judged by how well they can provide, because it's the women that told them this. Then the whole time, the guy that doesn't provide, but he's just in the gym building the muscles. He's sneaking around and knocking all of them down and we raising his babies and don't even know it because the women are lying. So again, it's not an equivalency. Number six, you yourself said that 90% of black women by age 30 have kids and that educated black men are looking for childless women. Now, this is what you said yourself. So what that means is that educated black women are single mothers, just like the uneducated, but that educated black men are not single fathers. So this proves that the most attractive black women are sleeping with the same few men and having their kids and trying to get the rest of us to raise someone else's kids. This is the reason that the women lied to us about what was attractive and unattractive in the first place so that they could practice a dual mating strategy, get one man's DNA and then don't go to him for the resources. Get the other man's resources to raise someone else's DNA. And they lied. When did we men ever lie to women in mass, let alone to our own daughters and nieces and sisters about what was attractive to us? You see, most of us aren't really upset. As I said before, we're not really upset about the preferences women have as much as we are upset about them lying about it. I am upset about the preference and the lying. Because I know that many other cultures, the atavistic, uh, you know, th th there's not this confusion that I'm going to talk about in number seven. But 
most other men don't even really trip off the preference so much as they do about the lion. Now I'm going to number seven. Number seven, most men grow up in our preferences. So maybe 16, we want the thought that's ratchet with the breasts hanging out, but we learn quickly she can't be a girlfriend, she can't be a wife. We learn that quickly. 16's kind of late to be learning that actually. So by the time we hit 19 at the latest, we learn that we have to outgrow certain things. You can't look at the ratchet thought with the body hanging out in public and expect her to be a good girlfriend, let alone a good wife. So we learn we got to make compromises. No one's explaining this to the women. The women aren't growing out of the thug love stage. Back in 1996 in Atlanta, I heard a, a woman in her 30s tell another woman in her 40s on Marta how she has to have a man with some gangster in him. And nobody checked on it. This is back in 96 and she's in her 30s. And the 40-year-old woman ain't say nothing. If she was 40, she may have been in her 30s too. But the point I'm making is that they're not outgrowing this. So they're in their 30s walking around still confusing thug machismo with manhood and masculinity. Now my question is, who the hell taught her to get these two confused? This is a problem, this is a phenomena only in our community, the Mexican community, the Honduran community, and the Salvadoran community, and there is a gang under culture that runs through all of these in common, ours and theirs. This is the equivalency between them by which they share the same confusion. And these reasons that I've stated are the reason why um, I'm saying that there really is no equivalence. We can't, I can't sit up here and say that, you know, we men did this, that, and the other, just like the women did X, Y, and Z. Most of what we've done has been out of ignorance because we're the ones that have to try to understand them. They don't have to try to understand us. They don't have to try to understand us until they get older after they've made bad choices that really just drove us away from them anyway. That's when they start trying to get in our minds. They don't even care about it before. We're the ones that got to try to understand them all the way from childhood up until old age. Except, of course, for the guys that are in the gym. They don't have to provide, try to understand nothing. They're getting approached because of their muscle. And that's okay if the women would have said at a young age that this muscle can take the place of even more important than money. Because on a real, bro, if they had simply been honest about this from jump, we would have known. I could have made decisions to, 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 you know what, pick an easier career, make a medium amount of money, have more time and money to spend in the gym, and I could have been swimming in it if that's what I wanted to do. But the reason most of us did not know this is because they kept that a secret, whereas we were telling them what to do and what not to do regarding men, and many of them still made bad decisions. There is no equivalency. It's nice of you to attempt to be fair, but in this case, being fair would be, and you'll see it as you get older. You'll see it over time. What I've said, uh, some of it you can see now, and some of it you're going to see more of over time, but... In order to be fair in this case, you would have to tell them that there is no equivalency. I admire your uh, attempts to be fair. I admire your sense of justice. I truly do, and I'm looking forward to the next content you put out. In the meantime, stay safe, Red. And to the audience, thank you for listening. Black Horse Sign of Blackout again. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.